are you, Papa? I'm fine. How are you, darling? I'm fine. How about you, Mima? Oh, great, precious woman. Great. Today's October the 18th, 2002, and we have our prize, Mima and Papa here, and we're going to interview them for the great grandchildren so that they can. When they get up old enough to appreciate this, they can sit down and see and hear me, Mom, Paul, Paul's life story. How old are you today, Daddy? I'm 80 years old. 80 years is old today. So February, you will be 81. February the 18th. And how old are you, Mother? I am 77. Today, uh, January the 8th, 1920. 1925. Daddy, you were born February the 18th when? 1922. 22. And y'all were married February the 21st? 1944. 1944. So this February will be how many years? Will be uh, 59 years ago. 59 years ago you two married. Wow. And Daddy, what is your full real name? Emily. Walton A. But they call you what? Jimmy. Jimmy. So you'll take all we'll give you, huh? Yes, if my name's Jimmy, I'll take all you give me. <laughs> what is your full name, Mima? My name is Florence Juanita Durham Hayes. Right, okay. And what was your mom and daddy's name? A. May Coley. Walter Jerome Durham. And Daddy, what was your mom and Daddy's name? My Daddy's name was Henley Grover Hayes, hmm. and my mother's name was Effie Ella Peak Hayes. Ah, and where was where were you born at, Daddy? I was born in Old Town, Cedar Town, Georgia. Hmm. And where was your? Do you know where your Daddy was born? No, he was he was born in Harrelson County, Georgia. And how about Mom? Where was she born? Mom was born in Polk County, Georgia. Polk County. And Papa Hayes died when you were how old? Nine years old. Nine years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother's folks lived at Lime Branch, Georgia, which is in Polk County, near the Harrelson County line. Mm -hmm. And so that's how you're kin to Uncle Gene, is he's your cousin on your mama's side. He was, he's a peak. Yes, he, he, he is mother's youngest brother's son. First cousin. Oh, that wasn't Uncle Charlie that died, was it? Um, was killed by a putwood truck? No, he was an Estes. Oh, mm -hmm. Charlie was an Estes. I didn't realize that. See, yeah. I, I thought he was kin to Uncle Gene. Mm -hmm. uh, so your mother married Mr. Estes when you were how old? Uh, about almost eleven years old. Eleven years old. How many, how many brothers and sisters do you have by Papa Hayes? Well, I've got three dead and three and and uh, yes, three dead and two that's living. I, I got two sisters living, Edna and Lillian. And the first child they had was a girl, and she died three days old. <clears throat> then I was born, and then Lillian was born, and then Edna was born, and then Billy was born. And then just before Daddy died, uh, Glenn Rufus was born and died at three three days old. Mm -hmm. And then about a month later, Billy, my brother, died of spinal meningitis, and so mother lost her husband and two sons in about 90 days during the Depression. Mm. <coughs> How did Pop Hayes die? Well, he had ulcerated stomach, <coughs> and they operated on him at Harbin Hospital in Rome, and uh, then five years later, uh, he went to Villa Record Hospital, and there they said he had cancer of the stomach. Mm -hmm. 
and, and uh, he died there. And you were nine years old? Uh-huh. Mm. And so then she married Mr. Estes and... She met him after about a year and a half, I guess, and they were married because of the... It was hard to get food and, and to manage a household, and mother was inexperienced in that, and I wasn't old enough to help her. Uh, very little I helped her, so I guess that out of fear uh, they married because they stayed married until Miss Destiny died and finally my mother died at 92 years old. But she married Pop Camp before she died. Yeah. yeah. How many stepbrothers and sisters do you have? I had eight and then I had I, I had a, a half brother, Miss Estes, the mother's firstborn. Was Neil. Was Neil, and then uh, Anne was born, who is still living, and she's a wonderful person. She sure is, and she lives in Atlanta, in Jonesboro. Uh, in Jonesboro. Mm -hmm. That's right. mm -hmm. And how about your education? How many? What, did you go to school or what? Well, I went to school. Uh, I would go to school. Well, I went to school until my daddy died. After he died, I didn't go to school. And when I did go, I went maybe a few weeks in the second and third grade. And then the next year, maybe I'd go two or three weeks and I'd take up in the fourth and fifth grade, and I was in the sixth grade when the last, I mean, I didn't have the whole thing uh, to study and to go to school, and what other studying I'd done was by the fireside and, get, and kerosene lamps. The first electric light that I know about, I was about 15 years old or 16. And then you went and lived with Ruby, Ruby and Seaford. Seaford and Ruby Bowman, which were like my dad and mother, and they were Christian people. I love them dearly, although Seaford is gone, and but I love his Ruby and his children, like they were. They're part of my family, and mm -hmm. usually when I go in that part of the the state, I visit them, and they are located about four miles out of Buckhannon, Georgia. Mm. And um, then you, you went into the Army at what age? Uh, let's see. When 1943, that would have made me 21. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went in uh, in Atlanta to uh, Fort McPherson, <coughs> and then I went. <coughs> I went from there to uh, Camp Order, Texas, to get my basic training in the infantry. Mm -hmm. I made corporal after 90 days. And what war did you serve in? Uh, World War Two. And what were you? What were you in? In that? What position did you have? Well, I was an infantryman, and uh, I had to give up my corporal rating when I volunteered for the Airborne. So I came to Fort Benning, where I met my lovely wife, <laughs> and we was married. She was the first person in my life I'd ever. Uh, asked to be my wife. And how old was she? And she was 19. Oh. And I was with her at her high school prom. How old were you? I was 22 at that time. Mm -hmm. and, and February the 18th, 1944, made me 22 years old. And uh, mother was 19. And uh, we, the Lord, had blessed us greatly. Mm. And I 
were you? I thought you were a bazooka man in the service. Was a what? Bazooka <laughs> man. Oh, I was a, a expert rifleman and an expert bazooka man. The others I just just uh, passed the grade. Mm -hmm. But on those weapons, yes, and, and of course, when when I got overseas, D Day and following D Day. Uh, that's what I used was a bazooka, which was for tanks and sand, sandbag machine gun nets and stuff like that. How, how did you get wounded? At Vieira, France, on August seventeenth, uh, I think. I just saw a ball of fire, and I didn't know anything. The next thing I knew, I was uh, in the edge of a field, and they had rolled out this metal stuff that lets planes come in on a field, <coughs> and they put me in a C-47 and flew me back to Oxford, England at 6th First General Hospital, and I stayed there 104 days. I had to learn to walk again. Mm -hmm. And you did. And you walked right back into Mama's arms. Yes, I did. Because she was at home waiting on you as mm -hmm. Mrs. Hayes. Mm -hmm. And so, now that leads us to Mother. So you were um, living on, where were you born, Mother? I was born in Atlanta. In Atlanta, Atlanta Georgia. Mm -hmm. And lived there, I guess, until I was about two or three years old. Mother and daddy then left. Daddy got a job in Birmingham at the steel mill. And that's where he left and went. Then uh, mother and I uh, went to Birmingham and lived. And I guess I was about five or six when we moved to Columbus, Georgia. And how many siblings do you have? At the present time, I only have one, but the other one is dead, which were twin boys, Eric and Harold. And where were they born? Born in Birmingham, Alabama. Hmm. And so then from Birmingham, you moved to Columbus, Georgia? Right. Into 1121 20th 20 Street? 20th Street. And that's where they lived until they died? Mom and Pop died? 36 years uh, that they lived in one house. 36 years. Mm -hmm. And they were, how long had they been married? When Mother and Daddy would have been married uh, 76 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no. Maybe 67. 67 years if they uh, lived until July the 4th. Of, fifth. Uh, yeah, the 5th. Mm -hmm. uh, Nineteen ninety four. Mm-hmm. And um you daddy took you to your prom? Yep. And then and you <laughs> and then you got married? Yep. Where'd you get married at? We married in Columbus, Georgia, at my aunt's house, William Hicks. Mm -hmm. On fifteenth Street. About thirteen something, fifteenth street. Mm-hmm. And when when Daddy came back from the war and everything, where did y'all move to? Well, we stayed at Mother and Dad's for about three to s three months until our home was built on Springer Street. Mm -hmm. 1318 Springer Street. Oh. Which is still standing. And how many children did you two have? Three, uh, two beautiful children. The boy first, the girl second. Lee Hayes was his name. Uh, let's see. Walton, Walton Lee. Lee Hayes. And shall I say? No. Uh, <laughs> Deborah Janice Hayes. <laughs> Papa! <laughs> <laughs> Which she named herself. Cricket. Oh, uh, well. Beautiful, beautiful children. Mm. Well, now, see, I, 
I was under the impression I got my nickname from Pop when he nicknamed all the grandchildren. Well, this you may have, yeah. uh, cause he named all the grandchildren. Froggy and Bull and. Which I cannot think of all of them. <laughs> uh, April and uh, all that business. Cindy was April. I was Cricket. Froggy was Dennis. Uh, Bull was. I thought Bull was Lee. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But anyway, who did Lee get named after? Well, he had my middle name. And then uh, a friend of mine in the service overseas, Lee Bean, was a good friend of mine. And he lived in Sweetwater, Texas at the time. Mm -hmm. And him and his wife and children moved from Sweetwater to Columbus and stayed about 10 or 12 years mm -hmm. because we were a good friends and we knew each other overseas. What did Pop Hayes do for a trade? Do you know? What did he do for a living before he died? Well, he was a farmer. Uh, I think at the time of uh, the time when he went into Harbin Hospital in Rome, he was uh, collecting metal and stuff like that and selling it. And he lifted something that caused the operation. Uh, oh, it mixed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, uh, of course, uh, his main occupation was farming. Did mom camp? Um, did mom haze? Did she work outside the home or? No, no, she never worked. At, uh, uh, I think maybe she worked before she married Daddy at a candy factory in Atlanta. Can, candy? Candy. Oh. Candy factory. Same one there. that my mother worked the at. The same one that Nita's <laughs> mother worked at. Oh. In Atlanta. So, um, Mom worked at a candy factory in Atlanta before she married Pop? Right. I didn't know that. And what did Pop do for a living? Oh. He was a machinist. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, at Archie That's where he retired. stayed and retired until they just uh, assembled Archie Uh huh. Okay, and um, can you tell me one thing that your parents' daddy passed down to you that that you can remember that you've always kept in your heart and your mind? Yes, my daddy passed down the Lord's Prayer for one thing, uh, the prayer that, I think the Lord's Prayer is the 17th chapter of John because that whole chapter he's praying to the Father, but uh, I was taught to, to pray, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Jesus, tender shepherd, hear me. Bless thy little lambs tonight. Through the darkness be thy near me. Keep me safe for morning light. All this day thy hand has led me, and I thank thee for thy care. Thou hast clothed, warmed, and fed me. Please listen to my evening prayer. Let all my sins be forgiven, and bless the friends I love so well, and take me when I die to heaven. Happy there with each well. Amen. Wow. So it's obvious that um, you know the Lord is your personal Savior. When did you accept Him as your personal Savior? I must have been about 14 years old at New Canaan Baptist Church in Harrison County, Georgia. Uh, then I went on as though maybe I had never because... Uh, I was denied uh, the liberty that some of the others that hadn't been a Christian. So I got back into the old ways and went on that way. I got overseas and fear caused me to know that the only way I could get through that mess would be for God to guide me and direct me and protect me. So I did a lot of praying. 
but after uh, he protected me and brought me home, I forgot about that. I began to live the way I thought, and he was blessing me every way in the world I could be blessed. But finally, uh, he, he put his hand on me, and he wanted me to serve him, and I could not understand why he wanted me to serve him since I had so small amount of education. Of course, I had done a lot of studying on my own, but uh, I couldn't sleep. He, his hand was on me. I could not sleep. I don't know. Several nights, I could not. I didn't sleep a wink, and then I worked the next day. But finally, one night, in the middle of the night, sometimes uh, I said, "Lord, I, I don't know what you want me to do, but whatever it is, I'll do it. I just want you to let me know." And for some reason, all my sleep and peace come back to me, and I went sound asleep, but from that day on, I started studying his word, and he gave me insight to a lot of his word, and he really blessed me, and I became a part-time minister, and we just finally went into full-time ministry, and uh, I was the first pastor at Emmanuel Baptist Church in Phoenix City, Alabama. And he blessed that church tremendously. When was you ordained into the ministry? Uh, I was ordained as a member of Central Baptist Church in Phoenix City. And the Presbytery was uh, gathered from the pastors of the church in that county. When was that? 1953. Do you remember the month or no? No, I don't remember the month, honey. I'm sure the papers are there. At Central Baptist Church in Phoenix City? Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, how about you, Mother? Have Have you got something on your mind or your heart that your parents have left down to you that you can recall? Just that they gave me a good childhood. My mother and daddy always got out and played with us as children. We wasn't allowed to go and visit other homes. We had the children at our house for mother and daddy to get out and play with us all. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Sunday school and church at the Methodist Church. I was baptized, as they say, with a little pansy on top of my head, but when I had done that, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, other than that, all I can say about my Christianity, when I was saved, and I can't remember the date, but it was after Daddy came back from overseas, we went to visit Mom Hayes, Near, near Jonesboro, Georgia. And uh, she was going to a cottage prayer meeting. And here I am in Bobby Socks with my hair rolled up. She begged me to go to church with her, I mean, to, to the prayer meeting with her that night. And I kept saying, Mother, I don't want to. I'm not, I'm not dressed to go. But bless her heart. Praise God, she kept the saint, insisted that I go with her, which I did. And I thank God that I did, because that's when I was saved. Mm -hmm. But to tell you the truth, what year, I cannot remember that. Mm -hmm. So you haven't been baptized since then? This, I cannot remember. Mm -hmm. uh, Daddy can't remember what I was baptized. Were you baptized, Daddy? Oh, yes. Oh. In fact, I was baptized twice. Were you? I was baptized first in Sam Cochran's fish pond, and next time in the baptistry mm. at Central Baptist Church. 
I think mother was baptized then, if I'm not mistaken. May or not have been the same day or night, but uh, it was in the same group. Well, we can baptize right here in the lake, me, Mom. That's, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> and when we come well, I home. Thought we, I thought I was baptized in the Red Sea. Well, you went swimming in it, I didn't you? I didn't do that, <laughs> but I don't think that I was baptized, but I went under it, yeah. You did. <laughs> Well, if you had one, one piece of advice or something you'd like to leave as, a, as your heritage down to your children and your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, what would it be? Well, in the scripture, the Holy Sabbath day was a type of the Lord Jesus. Before... God gave Moses the order of that seven day, seventh day. He created heaven and earth in six days, and he worked. Unless we think we can work our way into heaven, he rested on the seventh day, and he commanded all of Israel to rest. They were not to do any work at all. Now, after the Lord Jesus was crucified on the cross, we are to rest from our own works. We are to let God do any works that we do through us. We are not to do anything on our own. We are to, uh, to give our bodies a living sacrifice to the Holy Spirit of God and let Him do the work. We are not to do anything. No, we can work to get ourselves to heaven. And that's what I would tell my children and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren. If I and my life has meant anything to them, to, in their prayers, to seek the mind of the Holy Spirit, that they'll find it to be true, to seek from their self and let the Lord suggest and impress their mind to whatever he wants them to do. Okay. Well, that's one thing about it. They was raised. They'd be raised in a Christian home. All three of them. Mackenzie, uh, Keegan, and Ricky Lee. All of them have so far been raised as Christians. And I know without a doubt in my mind that they will be saved they are saved. And I can truthfully say that little Keegan, after his grandmother told me, I praised the Lord in Saudi Arabia by lifting his little hands. And as kissy he is, that's when his memo came up here, filled his cigarettes, made the fifth, Well, praise the Lord. And I've already told that child the story. And I pray that he will remember it. Well, we'll see to it that he remembers it, me, Mom. But you're going to be around to I to know tell him. that I had many, many of my children and my grandchildren praying for me for my cigarettes. And I just Thank God so much for each and every one of them that loved me enough to pray for me, to give them up. Well, he has blessed us financially that we own a home that's paid for. But those are not the important blessings. The important blessings is that he blessed us with two Christian children. Mm -hmm. That both of them have accepted the Lord as a personal Savior and has passed on to their children. And their children have passed on to their children. So God, in His omnipotent grace and mercy and forgiveness, has granted us the salvation of, of our whole family. And I thank Him every day for that. Mm -hmm. I do too. 
Well, um, to go back to your childhood, what do you remember before you left home, Daddy? What do you remember about your room? How, who did you have to share it with? Well, we had a three-room house. <laughs> three rooms. And there were 13 of us. My goodness. There was eight children that Miss Estes had. What, did he have them? I mean, well, did he have custody? His wife died oh, at okay. a birth. Of childbirth. Uh, of a childbirth. Uh, that the child died with him, and he already had these eight, uh, four boys and four girls. And then mother had us three. Can you tell me what their names were? So, Miss Esther's children? All, all of your brothers and sisters, whether they be half or natural. Well, it was J.T. and Charlie, William Lee, and Floyd Estes. Lena May, Anna Lou, Myrtle, and Elsa was the girl. And then uh, Neil and Ann Estes were my half brother and sister. And of course, my sisters are Lillian Hayes and Edna Hayes before they married. Okay. And they are still living. So where did, did all you boys have to share one room and all the girls another or what? All of us kids shared one room. All 13 of you? Right. Well, no, there wasn't quite 13 of us at that okay. time. When they married, there were 11 of us. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Well, people can't believe to this day that I worked, walked a, a half a mile or more, and pulled a crossfit saw with a grown man, Mr. Hobson Garner, for 40 cents a day in my dinner. We cut saw logs for a little lit sawmill that could saw probably 3,000 foot of lumber a day. What was your favorite toy? Did you have a toy or no? I cannot remember a toy. Red huh? Your red wagon and your little rod. Oh, that was before my daddy died. Yes, I do remember that I had a little red wagon. I could not go anywhere without <laughs> my sister Lillian. <laughs> I had to pull her around in the wagon. So it really didn't mean all that much because of that. <laughs> You're right. So did you have a favorite game? Did y'all play games back then or no time no, for games? No, I, I remember trying to dig a tunnel in, in a bank. <laughs> you know how a boy is. He, <laughs> he's going to make him a cave so he can call in. I guess I am here to death from the cave in. <laughs> <laughs> to get away from all them brothers and sisters, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Meemaw? I had a wonderful childhood life, sweetheart. I don't. Well, I enjoyed volleyball. I really did. We had a, a big field next door to the house in Birmingham, and uh, that's where Daddy and Mother put our uh, net, uh, and we played volleyball, hide and go seek. Uh, can you remember your your room, your bedroom, or anything? Oh yes, yes. I had a room by myself. And the two boys had their rooms by themselves. Mm -hmm. I sure do. And uh, it was during the Depression, and uh, every child in, on, in the neighborhood was getting a, I remember as, as if it was yesterday that they was all getting a bicycle for Christmas. And Daddy had asked me, what did I want? And I, of course, said, a bicycle. And he said, well, honey, I don't know whether Sidney Claus will be able to bring you that bicycle this year. And I was heartbroken. I had a dog, Maine Beauty, solid white. She's just like a, almost a human. And that Christmas morning, they all tried to get me to get up because my daddy had gone out. Where he got it, I do not know. 
But he got me a bicycle, painted it up, put new wheels on it, had me a bell on it. It was just as nice as if it was a brand new one. But I didn't want to get up that Christmas morning because I know I didn't have a bicycle. But old beauty, she finally got me out of the bed. And when I walked in there and under that Christmas tree, there stood my bicycle that my mother and daddy had for me. I guess that was the best Christmas gift that I can ever think of that I got and received. And I kept the bicycle until we moved to Columbus. And my brothers happened to be outside of riding theirs on Wells Avenue, which my daddy told them not to ride out there. And he was coming home, walking from Archie Ultramill, where he worked. Well, we all got rid of our bicycles. <laughs> so I didn't have no bicycles no more. Well, they're all safety. That's right. <laughs> so, did mom and pop ever own a car? Yes. My daddy had uh, a Model T Ford when they first married. He had told me different places that they went. Took them almost all day to get where they were going. And uh, then, before Daddy passed away, well, he bought, what kind of a car was it? He that bought he a Buick. Buick. And he, he went and got a, a extra everything. Holes, belts, everything <laughs> else he had in the of that car. And now that's just, uh, in his mind, was because he had to keep up all of the machinery and stuff at our Coles Mill, that was his job. Uh, maintenance superintendent, what, this, what he was at our shows a minute, he stayed there 30 years. But uh, one morning he left to go to work in the car and he had a buck out. And that's when it sat in the driveway and I think he sold it to LP. He got rid of it. And then he never got another never one. Never had another one. He walked everywhere they went, even to the show. The Royal Theater, which is toward down now. So all your kids walked with them. Mm. I walked to school from uh, 20th Street to Jordan High School. 38th Street. Uh, about eight blocks. Mm. Wow. Well. And how about you, Daddy? Did your did Pop Hayes have a car? No. Had a horse and buggy, didn't he? No, he didn't even have a horse and buggy uh, that I can remember. I suppose he had those. Where? It seems to me that he did have a car. Uh, just you know, before I got old enough to remember, but he was a uh, very patient person, a loving person. He, he, I, I, Sandy Claw brought me a little old single shot 22 rifle before I was nine years old and I would go hunting with him and he would let me, he'd show me the squirrels and let me shoot at the squirrel. If I missed him, he would, he would shoot it with his gun. But I love my daddy very, very much. Uh, he was a very humble man, and a man was a godly man. What's your favorite color, Daddy? My what? Color? Favorite color. Blue, I guess. You have a favorite flower? Mm -hmm. I caught him with one. A gardenia. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we'll have to hear that story. What's your favorite color, Mama? 
My favorite color is green. Green? Mm -hmm. Oh. And what's your favorite flower? I would have to say a rose. What color? Any color. Any color? Any color. But I prefer red. Mm -hmm. So, um, what what was it about Mama that made you propose to her? She's the best looking woman in Columbus, Georgia. <laughs> No kidding. As far as I was concerned, the only one that was there. Mm. <laughs> but uh, I can not, I'll, I'll not forget tonight we was in a car that I bar borrowed from my sergeant, and she had on those uh, sardinias, and of course the uh, glasses were rolled up in that car, and they just like a perfume. Mm. Enticing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so she really trapped you in her. Oh, yes, she did. She, <laughs> she put that loop down there and I stepped right in the middle of it. But not only that, he thought he he was twenty two and he he was ready, he thought, to get married. And but he wasn't sure. And we had a date one night, and he left early and went to visit another girl. He said he was miserable the whole time. Well, darling, it, it, it was right around the other way. I, I purposely got a date with that girl because I wanted to make sure I was ready for marriage, and, and, and it neither was the one. And that's when I spent a miserable... 30 minutes uh, an hour, and I excused myself and come back by mom, my mother's house and spent the rest of the time until I went back to the post with her. I, I, I just wasn't uh, comfortable, no, no one with her. How did you propose to her? It was at a cafe on 12th Avenue. That's right, we was, and uh, we talked about my background and her background. I told her that I was a poor man. I had no financial things to offer her. But I only had my love that I could give to her. And she began to tear just come in her eyes and and she really did cry and accepted my proposal. And then how did you ask Pop? Well, I, I, I didn't want to marry her because uh, although she was 19 years old, but I, I needed to, to be clear about what our intentions was. So I don't think it was that night, but it was the next week or the next, next time that I uh, visited Mother, I said, I told her, I said, I'm going to talk to Pop. And so when I got ready to leave, I asked him if he'd step out on the front porch. I'll never forget that night. The light was shining between the Venetian blinds on the door, glass door. And uh, I told him that uh, we, I had asked Nita to marry me and we loved each other. We wanted to get married. And he looked real funny at me and he said, well, son, I thought may, maybe you wanted to borrow five dollars, but I didn't know you could ask for my life savings. <laughs> and uh, he said, I, let me think about it. And he never did, even from that night, he never did say yes. But when he was at the wedding, he went along with everything that we did. I think Nita's mother saw a lot of me. So did they treat you like a son? Or yes, did? they did. Yeah. They, they, they treated me like a son. If I'd have listened to them, I would have been a millionaire today. <laughs> That's kind of the, the, the story. If a frog had wings, he wouldn't bump his rear end right. every time he took a step. Well, that's the trouble with the, girl, the children today. You can tell them the things that you have experienced yourself. 
if they don't listen, they will not have anything. They will not have anything. Um, uh, let's see. Did you, by any chance, did you have a TV when you was growing up, Daddy? Dude, are you kidding? I didn't say I have an electric bulb until I was 15. <laughs> Did you have a, <laughs> I don't guess you had a favorite movie on the TV then, did you? Oh, I could I could walk to town to the Cedar Theater in Cedar Town, Georgia, and see uh, uh, the Lone Ranger. Um, what was the man's name uh, that wore the mask? Uh, the black Tonto. Man. Oh. Uh, uh, the Long Ranger was yeah. the one that wore well, the black yeah, mask. There was another one that uh, they they played. It took you six weeks to see the whole thing. Oh, oh Zorro? Zorro. Zorro. <laughs> that was the one. Bob Steele. Oh. Luke Gibson. <laughs> and those, uh, I've been in the Cedar Theater so much that a lot of times I could get in there without paying a penny. Because the man knew us and would let us in without any money. Did you have running water in your house? Or did you have to, a well? Running water? We didn't even have a well. We had to go down a, a, a deep place to a spring and get water, which we had a, a fence around the spring and, and carried it up to the house. So you didn't have indoor toilets or plumbing? <laughs> Are you kidding? We was looking to have an outdoor toilet. <laughs> uh, how far was your outhouse from the house? Well, uh, probably 150 yards. And, of course, I left home when I was quite young. I was about 13. I left home and uh, went to Ruby and Seaford. And there the outhouses were, oh, 50 or 60 yards away. We did have a well there on the, on the porch. And uh, I was treated like a, one of the family. Right. So you had a bedroom in their house? Oh yeah, I had a bedroom to myself. I'll never forget, I had to work. We started a dairy farm, and I was getting up at 3.30 in the morning and going to bed by 9 or 10 o'clock at night. I got to where every time I stopped, I'd go to sleep. So one morning, Seaford come in to wake me up, and we had the windows up, and my bed was right next to the window so I could get the cool air, and it was raining right into my face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and that's when we had the electric light now. <laughs> they, they, we'd had it about five or six months, I guess, and they turned the light on and got the light. They said, come here, Ruby, and the rain was raining right in my face, and I was just sleeping up a breeze. And how old were you then? I was... Uh, Fifteen, I guess, or sixteen. Mm. Um, how about you, Mother? Did you have a favorite movie or a favorite program? or? No, darling. Every Saturday I was at the Royal Theater. I watched all pictures, especially the, like Daddy said. We had series. You watched so much one week and you had to be in suspense of the next week <laughs> in order to get back to see what had happened. So you're the reason soap operas have taken place. Right. I guess <laughs> so, darling. But Mimo don't watch them. <laughs> um, what, uh, did you have a special friend, that playmate that you ever played with that you can still remember? Me? Well, Daddy first. Okay. Well, yeah, a fellow named Belma Hawkins. My mother met him later, but uh, we were all, we were both good friends. Of course, Charlie Estes was a pretty good friend. JT, we called him Grandpa because 
his ways were different from ours. We were daring and uh, we did a lot of things that he wouldn't do. He had more sense than we did. But Bear Mahawkum, I guess, was as close a friend as I had in the neighborhood. Was he older or younger? I think Verma was, uh, uh, Charlie was the older one, oh. but uh, Verma Hawkins was about my same age. Yeah. Charlie was about your age? Yeah. Charlie was about my age. Yeah. Charlie was about my age. Yeah. Charlie was about my age. 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 His daddy. That was my no, no. That was my favorite. Uh, Jean's daddy. Was my favorite uncle that uh, Buck would put on. That was Mom Camp's uh, brother. Brother. Mom Hayes's brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Charlie was your cousin or your half brother, step brother. No, my step brother. He's the one that blew part of his hand off with a shotgun. He's the one that another man blows part of his hand off. <laughs> oh. and pushing it up to keep him from shooting. Him. Oh, wow. He was bad to fight. He enjoyed fighting. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not good. <laughs> uh, well, what about you, Mother? Do you, did you have a favorite friend? or? Yes. I had one that lived right across the street from me, Elizabeth Alma. Um, and Leela Tramble. She and I went to school together. It was in the same place. I was more or less her interpreter. She was, she talked so <coughs> fast nobody could understand her. So I had to repeat everything she said. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth Arnold played a part in our meeting one another. Oh. Well, I got Daddy a date with her one night. I was dating another guy. And uh, I asked her, I fell in love with your Daddy that night. And uh, I asked Elizabeth, did she care anything about him? She says, no, if you weren't dated, go ahead and date him. So I did, and that was what started the whole thing. So how long did y'all date before you married? At least two weeks. <laughs> oh, uh, we dated about three or four, maybe five months. months. And then when you proposed, how long did you wait till you got married? Well, I proposed about the time Mama got 19, I think, yeah. about in January, and, and we set the date for the 18th of February. But when it come around, that was my birthday. I would have been 22. And when it came around, uh, Uncle Lynn, uh, Nita's, uncle and aunt, we were going to get married to her house, and her uncle was going to marry us. No. Uncle, uncle Claude was, uncle going, Claude he was, was going to marry us. He was a minister, so. But Uncle Lynn, who lived at the house where we were going to get married, was out of town on business. He was executive vice president of Arch Oldsmill. <coughs> and he was out of town on business in Washington, D.C., and he'd come back. And he was back on the 22nd. So the night of the 22nd, him and Uncle Claude, uh, Nita's daddy's brother, and of course uh, Uncle Lynn, Mr. Hicks, was uh, Nita's uncle because he married Nita's daddy's sister. And all of us, uh, even a bunch of the guys from Fort Benning was there at the wedding. Well, that had to have been the 21st, because you got married February the 21st. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not the 22nd. Okay, um, you brought up something something interesting. Mother, how many, can you tell me who, can you tell me Pop's family, tell me who his brothers and sisters okay, were, and his mom and daddy? His brothers and daddies are, uh, uh, was uh, Florence. All I knew is Florence. That was his mother. Uh, Allen. She was an Allen. 
before she married Papa Durham. Um, what age they were when they uh, died, I cannot remember. Well, all right, but who, um, how many children did they have? Um, what was Pop? What was Papa Durham's name? George Marion Durham. Um, there was Uncle Harry, uh, Uncle Claus, Aunt Olivia, and my daddy, Walter Durham Durham. Big Mama had, I think, two children that was dead. So y'all called her Big Mama? Big Mama. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother's mother, we called Granny. Mm -hmm. And how many children, Granny. tell me their names. Granny and Papa Coley. Uh, Granny was a thrift. Ida, Slayer, Sally, Lou, Ida, thrift. Holy. She was named after all of her grandmothers. Uh, also, uh, Papa Coley's name was Jimmy. Okay, before we was disturbed with the telephone ringing there, what was you were in the middle, mother, of telling me about my grandparents yeah, or my great grandparents. Yeah. Tell, tell me who Mom Mom Coley. Yeah. Uh, Granny Coley, rather. Granny Coley uh, and Uncle uh, and Pop Coley's name was Jimmy. And they had uh, Uncle Lonzy. They had uh, Aunt Jetty. They had Uncle Jess and my mother. If they had any more children, I don't know. Was Mom the oldest or youngest no. or middle? or? Uh, there was Uncle Lonzy, like I said. I gave them to you as they came. Oh, as they came. Yeah. Okay. Um, all this, you do have a record that your granddaddy, my daddy, mm -hmm. kept and took the house. You want to, you know, like I said, it's yours. Uh, get it, make a copy of it. You'll know where they're buried, their ages, how they died. Uh, Uncle Hans, I mean, Uncle Jess was a diabetic. Uh, he had both legs amputated. That's Mom's brother. brother. Uh -huh. And are any of them still living? Nope. All of dead. All of my daddy's people are dead. Mm -hmm. um, Aunt Judy had uh, one child. Uh, Bobby uh, Jenkins was her name. She had uh, two children with uh, Jack Bennett and uh, Diddy Ruth Brown. Both of them are still living. They're your cousins? Yeah. On your mama's side? On my mother's side. Okay. And Aunt, uh, Aunt Leon on your daddy's side, uh, Pop's uh, sister, Aunt Leon. Uh, Marion is uh, the only child she's got living. She only had two. Elsie was the oldest, and Marion. Hicks. 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 Uh, they live in America, Georgia? Yes. Now, Marion was named after her dad. After Aunt Papa Durham. After Marion. Uh, <coughs> oh, L.C. was named after his daddy. Okay. Oh. And, uh, Aunt Leah was named one, I believe, when she died. I didn't know Uncle Claude was a preacher. Yes, he was. Non-denominational non preacher. I always thought he was a banker. Fireman. A fireman. A fireman. 
And then when he retired from the fire department, he went and worked at the bank. Oh. <coughs> and he uh, put out the fire at that, what was that, hotel? Oh, the Wine Car. The Wine Car Hotel in Atlanta. Uh -huh. he, he was a fireman there. Hmm. All right, tell me about my great-grandparents on your side, Daddy. Well, I never saw, <coughs> I never saw my grandfather Hayes. He died uh, about the time I was born. But my grandmother Hayes was living, and uh, she was a mise before she married. And my daddy's name was Barry Hayes. And my grandfather's name, I mean, was Barry Hayes. And uh, he was a descendant from Rutherford Hayes, the President of the United States. Wow. And uh, I don't know, I guess I was born in a bad time because you, it was hard to even have food to eat. You, you either had to raise it because there was just no money in circulation. And uh, uh, Granddaddy Hayes was, uh, as, as far as I know, my daddy said that he was a godly man. But my grandmother Hayes was a very high-tempered person. I understand that she, her mother, was a part of a Cherokee Indian. So I don't know where the name Mize come from. There were quite a few Mizes uh, in Harrison County that I know of and grew up around. Where's Harrison County? Harrison County is uh, Bremen, Georgia. Uh, Buckhannon, Georgia is the, is the county seat. Tallapoosa is in Harrison County. Bremen is in Harrison County. Mm -hmm. Tom Murphy, the Speaker of the House, the longest, uh, he's got a record how long he's been the Speaker of the House of Georgia, is from Harrison County, Bremen, Georgia. Mm -hmm. All right, what about Mom Mom Hayes? What was her, you said she was a peak. What about her parents? Uh, her parents, I knew uh, uh, my granddaddy, Peak. Uh, he died when he was 72 years old. Uh, him and grandmother had broke up housekeeping. And my grandmother Hayes, I mean, grandmother Peak was a boy before she married my granddaddy Pete. And uh, I, re I know that she fell and broke her hip when she was about 72 or three. Never had a doctor to set it or anything. She hopped on that leg from then until she was 94 when she died. Wow. And, uh, but uh, one of the sweetest persons you'd ever want to meet. And how many brothers and sisters did Mom Hayes have? Well, she had uh, Uncle uh, Ed, Uncle Joel, Uncle Jim Pete, and Uncle Alvy Pete. Those were her brothers. And there was uh, Annie, Annie Peak, who married uh, Barrett, that lived in uh, College Park. And uh, uh, there was May, who lived in Polk County, out from Cedartown. Uh, she died of cancer. And then there was a uh, mother. So there was, uh, what, four boys and three girls, I believe, in that family. Um, and mother was the youngest. She was the youngest girl. I believe Uncle Ivy was younger than her. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know how old she was when she got married to Pop Hayes? Papa Hayes? No, I don't, honey. I really don't. Mm -hmm. What did you call your grandparents? What What did you call them? I call them Grandpa. Grandpa? Mm -hmm. And Grandma. And Grandma. Oh. And what did you call yours, Mother? Granny um, Cohen, Papa Cohen, Big Mama, and Papa Darrell. Mm. Do any of your children look like any of your grandparents or your parents? Yeah. Uh, Lee, I think, took after the Allens, which was Big Mama. Uh, Daddy was a lot like the Allens. Uh, you remind me a lot of Big Mama. Mm. How about temperament-wise, personality-wise? Uh... Big Mama had a temper. She was Irish. Uh, I've seen her mad. Mm. I've seen her so mad she foam at the mouth. Wow. Uh, so she was Irish? Yeah. Do you know of any of our descendants that might have come over on the Mayflower? Or? No, baby. No? Uh, I personally don't, but like I said, I, I, your, your granddaddy mm -hmm. uh, has taken a record and he has formed that family tree book, which is at the house. Mm -hmm. What What about you, Daddy? Where are our descendants from? There were three brothers that come over. Uh, according to the family tree, uh, they were from England. Uh, they, uh, according to the information I can get, there was a a German that was uh, Hayes, H A Z E, and he married one of the royal families of the England, and that's where the H A Y E S comes from. Then uh, the, the two brothers, that, uh, three brothers that were descendants from that couple, I don't know how many generations down, they came to America. And I don't know that it was on the Mayflower, but I do know it was in the early times that they fought in the Civil War. And Lucifer Hayes was uh, a descendant. The, one that the brother that went to Ohio is is a direct descendant. The, the brother went to, one went to Ohio, one went to Alabama, here in Alabama, and one went to the North Carolina. And the Ohio and North Carolina brothers are where I come from, down through that strand. So I don't know about the Hayes in Alabama. There are quite a few of them around Dothan and down in there. But there's not a whole lot of hate anywhere that I know of. So well, if there are, they don't spell it at all like we do. Well, the, the, the one reporter that's on ABC News, she spells her name exactly the way I do. Mm -hmm. But So your the name was changed? I mean, the spelling of the name was changed? Yeah, in German... H A Z E. They they use Z Z's where the English uses Y. Mm. So we're your German descent. Well, uh, there's uh, there's some German in German blood in me and English blood or Scottish blood. And mother, you're Irish and. Uh, well, Papa Darrell was Indian. I don't know I, what was that. Uh, Cherokee. Cherokee. Yeah. Uh, so you got Cherokee and you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I would say that I have a lot of Indian in me. I imagine that I'm more or less Irish. Mm -hmm. Red hair and green eyes. Right. Got the temper too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to. <laughs> I definitely had, used to have a high temper. I definitely did. I just remember Daddy saying I had a red-headed, green-eyed monster Honestly. from from Ireland. Yeah. 
he would say that kiddingly. So I was just wondering about the temper yeah, part. Yeah, for sure. So you've got some of Big Mama's temper like I've got some of Big Mama's mm -hmm. temper. Mm -hmm. So that's how it's filtered down, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, my mother had a temper. Hmm. Yeah, my, my daddy had a temper. Uh, I mean, he had a temper. Now, he, I mean, he was easy going, but my uncle told me about what he did at Case Funny Yard. He jumped over a counter and got a man, and it took about three people to put him off of him. Ah, well, that is a temper, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. Well, can you tell my girls and my grandchildren any stories about me when I was little and growing up? You will tell what me to. <laughs> yeah, I do. I really do. Yeah, I can say you was big hearted. You let, you let other people drive my car <laughs> and run over mailboxes and everything <laughs> else and cost me a lot of money. But you was a sweet child. I loved you with all my heart because you had ways, even with your temper, you still had, had ways of right and wrong, and you knew them very well. And you was an outspoken person, where Lee was not. He he is a person that can get angry without saying anything, and you are not. You're more like your daddy. He, you get angry, you let it go through those through that tongue that James said was like a rudder of a ship. And, uh, but still, the sweetest thing that ever walked on this earth. The sweetest. Wow. Never well, did give us any trouble. And what I appreciated Never. about you was that if you got in trouble, you would always say, Daddy, can I see you? And would go to your room and you would tell me how it happened and all about it. I can remember the last time I was with you. I can never forget that. I, it always hurt me to whip you or leave. But you sort of persisted into the situation so you would make me whip you. At that particular time, I sent the after a switch. I sent you to the bathroom and told you to stay till I got in there because I didn't want to whip you when I was uh, angry. And I would whip you a little bit and then I would talk to you and you'd say, "Yeah, but Daddy, you 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 whip me and you did this this." And I said, "Honey, I don't want to whip you. Why do I have to whip you?" Well, I won't do it no more. I done told you that. And I said, I know you did, but you told me that the last time I whipped you. You wouldn't do it no more. You could, went, turned around and did it. But uh, anyway, that was the last time. And, and uh, But you wasn't, I could always know that if you got in trouble, I didn't worry about you too much because of that. Amen. Now, Lee, he never confined it in me the way you did. You seem to have a sense that uh, if you got in trouble, I'd always forgive you and and try to steer you right. You still do. And uh, this is a, a wonderful relationship. And I don't see how the whippings hurt me. No, I don't think so. We didn't abuse you. We corrected you right. What well, your daddy did, I'll have to say. Mother never did whip you until she got mad. And that was the wrong time to do any correcting. Well, how how was I uh, in driving? Did how well, your daddy taught you how to drive. You went, you loved to travel with me. Oh yeah, you would travel with me and I would let you drive and I would correct you every time you do something wrong and you turned out to be, I think, a very safe driver. Oh, thank you for that. Um, can you remember um, anything about uh, school? Was How was I in school? Well, of course, there's one thing that impresses my mind was when I thought you was mistreated. Somebody made you 
monitor. Monitor the school bus or something, and then because you tried to correct somebody that was trying to fight, I guess, or something, they threatened to put you off that school bus, and when I found out about it, I was so angry that I called the school, and I, I told them if, they, if, if that man ever put you off that bus, he'd have to answer to me, and uh, I, don't, I was apologized to because of that, and the people at the school realized they didn't do my children. They didn't mess around with my children. You can me, but you don't my wife and children. Um, can do you, you know anything about uh, how old I was when I was saved? When you were saved, mm -hmm. who who led me to the Lord? Or uh, yeah, well, I don't know. Your daddy had a lot to do with that, but. Uh, if I'm not bad or mistaken, I think Willie B. Wyndham was the one that uh, baptized you. And it was on an Easter Sunday. Um, I think that you was about, I want to say, around 12 or 13. The best that Mother can remember. How was I... Uh, how old was I when I started, was allowed to start dating? Thirteen. I mean, sixteen. Uh, thirteen. <laughs> sixteen. I had thirteen on my brain when I was talking to you about when you were saved. Mm -hmm. No, you were not allowed to date until you were sixteen years old. Mm -hmm. And was there any boyfriends that I had that you didn't like? Yeah! There was. <laughs> Quite a few! Quite a few! <laughs> Was there any that you liked? We wore out the carpet with you. <laughs> Was there any that you liked? Oh, you bet your bottom dollar. Huh. You married him. Mm. That's the man that's... We couldn't ask for any better for you. Hi. And uh, my mother still says that she's the one that got you two together. But bless her heart. Uh, no. Nah. Do you know that story? Sure I know that story. What was it? You was in the hospital having your tonsils taken out, and Ricky was there visiting you, and Mom was there, and uh, he was going to take her out to eat. And uh, she seems to think that that's when she talked to Daddy. And you mean my husband? Your husband into marrying you. <laughs> he had just, to be talked into it, huh? Yeah, just like she was the one that took and said that Jimmy, your daddy, was the one for me. Mm. And did uh, did Ricky come to you, daddy, and ask you for my hand in marriage? I believe he did. Oh. Uh, I, I think he did, and I think I told him that all I was interested in that he treat you right and don't beat on you because I didn't think that a man should beat on a, uh, a male should beat on a female. God's word was impressed my heart and mine. I, uh, every sense that he told me, it, I went astray. But then in my heart, his word has always been there. And I know that he does me. And when Ricky talked about y'all you know, getting married, my main concern was I, I, I didn't care about finances or any of that stuff. I just wanted everything to be humane in your home. Um, when, when I was a little girl, uh, where did we live? Where we didn't live would be easier to explain. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, you, we was living at the time with Lee and Rena Bean. Uh, Y'all was delivering milk, you remember? Yeah. I went in with you that morning on a Thursday. 
uh, at mothers to feed closer to the hospital because I felt like she was would be coming that day. My mother religiously had a, a form of uh, housework and Thursdays was her cleanup day and she was mopping the kitchen floor and I said, Mother, call Aunt Lee and let's get to the hospital. I'm ready. Well, give me time to finish uh, mopping the floor. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's when our baby girl was born. I was born on a Thursday. Thursday. Your brother was born on a Monday. How much did I weigh? Uh, he weighed uh, nearly seven pounds. I was a little baby. Yeah, yeah, you was. Do you know how long I was? Or did they do that back then? Oh, yeah, they did. And uh, it's in the baby book for him, but Mother can't remember all that. Can you still have my baby book? I have your baby book. Mm. Um, you got a shoe, did No, that's in the real shoe. Oh, yeah. um, I never was. I lost all her baby pictures up there next to that uh, floor shop that we lived at. We kept all my stuff in the uh, basement. basement. Mm -hmm. That was Lyndon's Floors? Yeah, Lyndon Floors is the floors that we lived next door to. In Columbus mm -hmm. on uh, what was the, it was up from the Longhorn Restaurant? There was a park across the street. Oh, the, oh, that's when we lived the back of the forest, forest, right? No, sir, the forest was on our left. That's right, that's right. Yeah, that's where the dog that we love so much. Rebel. Mm -hmm. Rebel. Got somebody broke his jaw under there and I had to let y'all make up your mind to put him to sleep and I. But every, every one of the family loved him very much. Even though he was a man's dog, you and mother couldn't mess with Lee and me in his presence because he, he would get between us. Mm. Can you tell me when we lived in Rome and we had the Casaloma Cafeteria? Where was the Casa Loma Cafeteria at in Rome? It was on Maple Street. Right above a glove uh, factory. Uh, a, uh, Andrew, I think, is the name of that glove factory. Mm -hmm. And we was right up the street from it because a lot of those people that worked there would eat at the, at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And where did we live in Rome? When mm -hmm. Andrew, oh, I must say Andrew's. Lady uh, Andrew's. Uh, uh, property was on uh, hmm. uh, the highway that comes in from Rockmar. Mm -hmm. It was back off of that highway a little ways. And was that who? Who was the relative that had the the? Was it the Easy Shop or the where the ice ice was? I, I oh, that was Robert and Ewell Peak, my first cousins. And was they that all, in Rome? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they had lived in Cedartown, and Ewell had owned about five or six taxi cabs at Cedartown. And him and Robert, his brother, older brother, Ewell was the second one, was up with Jim Peak's boys. They, they owned... They had a restaurant in Cedar Town, but then they sold it out. And uh, you, Robert, run one of those little chain food, quick food place where you could, uh, like the easy, like you're talking about, mm -hmm. shop. Robert owned one of his own, and then you had one down uh, there close to the cemetery, the Mur mm -hmm. Myrtle Hill Cemetery. Myrtle Hill Cemetery, and yeah. that is in Rome. Yes, right. and it's where one of the president's wife is buried. It's up on a hill. Right. That's right. Mm. And whereabouts is that at in Rome? Do you know? Yeah, it's uh, it's on 27 South. I so, 
He's the one that lived up on that hill next to the That's cemetery. Right, and they had the, had the old folks home. They, they finally made it into an old folks home. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we didn't live there. No, no, no. no. We never no. lived there. No, no. We lived on down that street uh, from them, though, uh, on the corner. Up, up on a hill in a cemetery wasn't far. Yeah, the cemetery about three blocks down from it. Where about was that that we lived there? Oh. I don't know the name of the street, but it was close to Myrtle Hill Cemetery. Close to Myrtle Hill Cemetery. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and whereabouts was it when we lived in Rock Mart? We lived. On 278. On Highway Route 278. 278. That's right. Going into Rockmark. Coming into Rockmark from Atlanta, yes. We lived on the right hand side in a two story building. Mm -hmm. Upstairs. Mm -hmm. Is that the only place we lived at in Rockmark? I believe so, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, where did we live at in Cedar Town? We never lived, never, in, Cedar never Town. lived in Cedar Town. Well, where did we live at in the little country? Uh, I thought that was in Cedar Town. No, no, I was in Harrison County, right out of Tallapoosa. So that's where we lived? Yeah, one of the little old county roads. So uh, it was. Uh, that's when we did, your daddy went into farming. Yeah. That's when we had the buckboard and the yeah. mule. Right. Uh, all right. Um, let's see. When you were preaching, you preached in, was it Mayo, Florida, or Daytown, or Perry? Uh, I preached in Day and Mayo, Florida. Uh, Airline Baptist Church in Mayo. Day, Florida was the uh, Brewer Lake Baptist Church, or the only church was in Day, Florida, and a Baptist church. And uh, But I preached first at the Riverside Baptist Church. In Mayo? Between, uh, uh, what was the name of that? Anyway, it was between the, the city where we lived. I was running the insurance debit. <coughs> and, uh, well, what is the name of the, the city yeah. where we lived in the new house? What? It's where you got your scar, or Lee got his scar, or whatever. It's where I got mine when I when I slid down the right. ladder in the box. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was in Daytown, I mean Mayo, no. or Perry. 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 In Perry. 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 It's where we had Muddles and Puddles, that's the two right. puppies. That's right. All right. All right, and that's also where the wild boars used to run into the church. church. Yeah, well, no, that was at Dayton. That was Florida. in Day, Florida? Yeah, that's right. Now, which one was it that was the school was close to Day. the school? At Day. That we live, that, well, when we moved, when I quit running an insurance, Debbie, and started a full-time minister again, we moved to Mayo, Airline Baptist Church in Mayo, and they had a pastorum. So we lived in their pastorum, and the strangest thing that I've ever experienced in a calling a pastor to the church, I had not, I wasn't seeking a church, there wasn't anything happening. <clears throat> and one night, one Wednesday night after services, uh, uh, Brother, uh, we all went. Brother Will Windweedle and and two other uh, deacons from Brewer Lake Baptist Church come and knocked on the door and they come in and said they had had a church business meeting and they had called me. So I, I wouldn't accept it at that time because I needed to pray and find out the mind of the Lord. But uh, uh, about a month after that, or maybe six weeks or two months after that, we moved to the pastorum at Day, Florida, where the school was right on the edge of the yard, where the hogs, like the kids, got into the, the church building, not in the sanctuary, but in the part of the church. Mm -hmm. 
because that's where I went to work uh, making chrome for automobiles. You work? Putting metal on Well, um, but that's where they asked you there to resign the church because I had to, I was on the midnight shift and I was coming in with another woman and two men driving us, you know, back and forth to that plant. It was about eight miles to where Mother worked and and they they put her on the midnight shift and they didn't, they thought I should divorce her, I guess, because she was on that midnight shift. How were, how old was I at that time? Oh, you was going to school, uh, you had to be about, uh, about eight, eight, eight or nine, nine, nine years old. That's when you, when you got your bicycle. You really both got your bicycles in there. And you got a watch. Yes, I sure did. You, you got a good memory, darling. Is that also the place where I tried to slide down the seesaw and got the splinter in my fanny? No. Uh -uh. no, no. That, we, there was a new house being built mm -hmm. at Perry, or across the river from Perry. That, I was running the insurance debit then, and uh, uh, they still was pouring concrete and stuff like that, so I think that's where you got your scar. Y'all were playing out in the yard. Yeah, it was Larry and Dennis and me and Lee. We were out there and the carpenters had left a ladder and they put me in a box and first time my brother ever said ladies first, first. and they put me in the box and shoved me down the ladder like a roller coaster and I went through the sl slats in it and a nail got me. But I'm talking about the time that I tried to slide down the seesaw and got that long splinter in my rear end and y'all had to dig the splinter out of my bottom. That was in day. That was in day at the school yes, grain? Oh. Mm -hmm. And you had uh, in uh, uh, Phoenix City at Emmanuel Baptist Church, you fell off. That's okay. I'm going to let it ring. Go ahead. You fell off of the uh, the and you was two years old that Sunday. Had two stitches had to take in his uh, um. Yeah, mm -hmm. two years old mm -hmm. and two stitches. So we remember that very well. In fact, you were so active. Uh, <laughs> you was getting in trouble all the time. They said, uh, I'll take her on to the hospital. You go on to church. I said, no, I'm going on with my baby. He said, no, you're going to go to church. I'm going to take her. Oh, that's what happened. But it just so happened the week before that, you had gotten into the closet where I had rolled up your baby uh, mattress and got into the decon rat poison. It was the week after that, uh, oh. because that's why she was spitting that it's burning her tongue. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's true. You're right. And when uh, Betty come in, I told him what had happened. He said, and you haven't got her to the hospital yet? I said, well, I didn't think she had swallowed it, you know, because she kept spitting. He said, I don't care. Give me that box, and I'm taking her to the hospital. So that's what he did. He took you to the hospital. I knew that rat for uh, That was the... Uh, dries up your blood. Yeah, and but I was worried about it, but uh, you had I don't think he swallowed any of it. No, that's what the doctor said, even though he washed your mouth out good and uh, checked your blood. Well, can you tell me how I've got, why, why this scar is on my neck? Yeah. Uh, we, we was at, uh, at the time we was at Mother's and Daddy's, living there with them. And uh, your neck had swollen up that morning. And it looked like you had the mumps. And that's what Mother kept saying. She said, that child's got the mumps. So well, I took you to the doctor. He said, no, she don't have no mumps. It's a gland that has uh, swollen. So he inserted, he said, don't think it's ripe enough, but I'm gonna go ahead and insert a needle in there to draw the, you know, the mucus out. 
that it wasn't ripe enough. But uh, he said if we don't do it, and if it burst on the inside of her head, she will not live. And it just so happened where he inserted that needle, and you would leave us playing on the floor, and you somehow bumped your little neck on his knee, and it bursted. And all that stuff came out of your neck, and that's what left that scar there. How old was I? Um, you was not quite a year old. Not quite a year old. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that happened before the stitches in my tongue. Right. See, at the time, we was in the church so much until uh, I didn't run from measles whooping cough and all these diseases because I said, you're going to have to have them anyhow when you go into school, so I thought the best for you to go ahead and get them while you're, you know, young. But uh, praise the Lord, you come out. You know, we did ha have the measles. Uh, and the whooping cough. The reason I didn't want Mother to go with us, she was crying and carrying on when you had two stitches in your tongue, and I told her to go to church so it would get her mind off, and I carried it to the doctor, and he put two stitches in your tongue, and I know it was sore for a while. That was the, that was the only time your mother tried to make an Easter Bunny cake for you, and that I did good. I have to give myself a pat on the back for that, but it was Easter, and I said, I'm going to make her an Easter bunny cake. And we did. Um, what was, can you remember any of my favorite stories or favorite games or anything? You used to love to play jacks. Tiddlywinks. Yeah, you know, lifting mm -hmm. them up. Uh, well, you played checkers a good bit with your daddy. But I never was good at checkers. Mm. Never was. Well, what, you said you used to work at the Chrome Factory. What other places have you worked, Mother? I worked at the Archie Hoser Mill. What did you, I was what did you do there? I made uh, stockings, well, a box stockings. And then when uh, I went up there, when the war started, and we made uh, goggles. When the war started, uh, the war was well, going I on. Met, was there. I, I met, they got in the contract to making goggles for the, uh, well. And those black curtains that they hung up in the airplanes. airplanes. To, Keep the shrapnel away from the uh, I worked, pilots and co-pilots and bombardiers. I worked uh, Peggy Hale's dress, Sunday clothes. I worked at Davidson's 10 years, selling ready to wear. How, how long did you work in the beauty shop? About, uh, about a year. And that was in Columbus? Yeah. Did you ever get your beauty license? Like four months. And, and who was it you worked for there? Jean uh, Lejeune and Harlan. Uh, I can't think of their last names right now. And it was called Lejeune's Beauty Salon? Lejeune's. Uh, Lejeune's Le Beauty Salon mm -hmm. in Columbus. And I used you as my first model. <laughs> well, uh, June indicated to me it must have been some French along there somewhere. But, um, I gave you the term that <laughs> bless your heart, you did go to school. <laughs> Looked like French poodle. Yes, you did, my darling. I remember that. And um, 
Also in Columbus, we used to live on 17th Street, upstairs over Morgan's Plumbing Seven Company. 17th Street, 10th Avenue. Mm -hmm. On the corner. Yeah, you was always hanging up for your brother when you got in the fights. Yeah, I thought yeah. you were going to run all the boys off of the whole block <laughs> one time. <laughs> Can, uh, can you tell me any time that I had surgery before I was ever married or oh, sure. in the hospital you or anything? Had, uh, well, your first surgery, you had your gallstone straightened out. And I believe you was about 13 then. I, we lived on Clover Lane Avenue. I think I was 12 years old. 12, I knew it was 12. We lived on Clover Lane. Yeah, right. because I didn't like it because you were so young. It was already cutting on me. Oh, uh, Dr. Jordan. Operated on you and Durden. Was it Durden or was mm -hmm. it? Uh, it was Dr. Durden. Mm -hmm. It was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you was also in the room with one of the little ladies that lived on Clover Lane, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Her sister that died. She had cystic fibrosis. Yeah. Lee dated her at one time. And, um, when they called and told me about it, I said, get her in another room, get her out of that room. Uh, what was that nurse's name? We called her. Was it Ma or Granny or? It was, uh, he, uh, her name was Hazel. And she dated Hugh, the blind guy, Hugh Ferris, that Ricky knew. Yeah. That was in uh, involved in his church group. Hugh Ferris was the blind piano player, and her name was Hazel. Okay. And she took care of me. It uh, was one of my nurses. Then you had your tonsils taken out. That was uh, when you were dating Ricky. I was 19. And then you had uh, that's all of that I can think of. And Daddy, you was driving a a, tank, a gas tanker truck uh, for Esso when we lived on Clover Lane. Tommy Pete, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I could come by, I could let every bit of the gas out of that tank and, and then drive it six blocks and I could get 10 to 15 gallons. I had a 50 gallon drum there because Tommy knew all about this. And I would come by there. I didn't have to buy any gas. I even you had enough gas to give Lee gas. Yeah. That was when we lived next door to the Bales. Right. Uh, and um, um, that's where Lee got his first pea green car. Right. <laughs> um, all right, then let's see. From there, we moved to Wareborn Drive. Yeah. I was, I think I was 13, 13 when we moved to Wellborn Drive. Yeah, and Mother was at work at Davis's. You, Lee, and your daddy moved all the stuff and was cleaning the house up when I come in that night. That was really the first house that I can ever recall that we ever bought. It is it the is. first. No, I bought no. the house the on first On Springer time. Street when yeah. Lee was born there. Yeah, we bought that house and we had no problem. The payments was only $51 a month. But this couple, uh, Ralph and Mayor Brown, come around and offered me, what, $3,800? I believe it was. Plus, just taking up the payments and having it changed over to their name. I don't know why I sold that. I made that was one of the greatest mistakes I ever made right there. How much did you pay for that house, Daddy? <laughs> the one on Springer Street? Uh huh. Know what I mean to got, but it was something like four or five thousand dollars. That was 1946. 19, yeah, the no. latter part of the year, 1946. Mm -hmm. And it was $9,000? I think so. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was for the house and the lot. Lot. 
Oh. How many bedrooms was it? Two bedrooms, a uh, hall and a bath and a automatic floor uh, furnace. Chimney and a fireplace. Okay, so you sold that in 1948. Lee was born in 48. No, I didn't say we sold in 1949, I think. Okay, and then you didn't own another house until Wellborn Drive, which was 19, was in the 60s. I was 13. I was born in 1951, so it had to be the About 65. 65. And how much did you give for that house? Uh, I had to pay the man five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars and equity. He, he lived on Warren Crane Road. Went over there. Well, we moved in there Rent. with the option to buy, renting it. And I think he got a little bit uh, anxious. I don't know why, but uh, he wanted to sell. He wanted to sell, so I got the money up and. Give it to the, the Georgia company was the company it was financed with, and I paid them. So I paid it off. Do you remember how much you how much you bought it for? Five hundred. Seemed like it was about eighteen or twenty thousand dollars, something like that. Wow, really? Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't all that much. Uh, I'm surprised it was that expensive. Because we bought our house around the corner from you in 1970, in 1971, and we only gave 12 five for ours. Of course, ours wasn't a corner lot, but so I was just wondering how prices have gone up. Well, the house we're living in now, we give $65,000 for it. Yeah, but um, I was just trying for on Wellborn Drive when I was 13. What houses and land was selling for? I think it was eighteen hundred dollars, honey. I'm not sure because mm -hmm. we had a corner lot, like you said, and uh, it was only a two bedroom and one bath. It was hall. three bedrooms. Three bed, three it bedrooms. was three bedrooms. Yeah, three bedrooms, a bath, and a hall, and a kitchen and a dining living room. Yeah, and a huge yard. And of course, I added no, to it. No, no price. Yeah, it was a mud hole in the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Hesses lived next door to us. And Which uh, she babysitted for you while I worked. Really? Yeah. Well, I was 13. I didn't need a babysitter. Oh, no, that was before, honey. She was babysitting for you. Yeah, she babysat oh, Sandra. 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 Yeah, when I worked at Kroger's. Right, so, right, yeah. right. Um, but she had two boys, Eric and Fred. Mm -hmm. Fred and Eric. Yeah. And then my best friend was across the street was Dolores Sanders. Right. And she had two brothers, Phil and Eddie, I think. Mm hmm And then there was Debbie Dupree that lived up the hill with the red hair that I fixed Ricky up a date with. <laughs> you remember her? Yeah. And uh, Smith girls. Charlotte and Opal. Opal. There was Barbara, Barbara Lanier. She's uh, the girl that had the black hair that lived on the other side of the Smith girls. Her well, daddy. Was the Watson girls, wasn't they? She didn't know the Watson girls. I don't know the Watson you, girls. They were no. behind you. Mm -hmm. And, Daddy, you run a tire route for Mr. Ward, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Safety tire company. Yeah. What, do, do you remember what year that was or how old I was? No, I don't. I just ran the route. I, in fact, to be honest, he was uh, having trouble uh, selling his tire. So I took, I took one route and built it into four, five routes. I, I want to say that I was 18 years old. I was going to say you was in high school. Because I went on a tire route with you once. Yeah. And I was dating Ricky at that mm -hmm. time. So right. I was 18 years old. And the coincidence of that, Ricky used to date Mr. Ward's daughter. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I didn't realize that. I didn't know that. I didn't either. But anyway, uh, so you drove, you sold tires for the, your, your son-in-law's almost father-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> and let's see. I was just and um, you had what was the name of your company that you had when Ricky and I got married? Well, he also sold Excello batteries. Oh no, but that years. was that. Uh, that uh, she talked yeah. about. Uh, that was before Lee and I were born. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, we had to move from Birmingham. I was oh, pregnant with you. Lee was born, but. I was carrying you. And you I lived in Birmingham? Yeah. Yeah, Central Park. And uh, I, I run a bank at the back. The doctor told Daddy to get me out of there because I was coughing so hard and he was afraid that I was going to lose you. Hmm. Where well, were you? There was, a, there was a, so much suck so. in there. You could wash your car, put it in your garage because uh, I had a garage and, and, and had a little old Studebaker, wasn't it? Put that to the baker in that garage, I could write my name on it the next morning. And that was in Birmingham, mm -hmm. Alabama? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Central Park, Birmingham, Alabama. Mm -hmm. I can carry it to the place right now. So was Lee born in Alabama or mm -hmm. he no. was born in Springer Street. Oh. All right. And so you was born back in Columbus, so we went mm -hmm. back to Columbus before you was born. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, what was the name of that place? I can't remember when Lee and Rena and all of us was living together at that time. Yeah, it was on Armour Road. Armour Road. Yeah. That's where you was born. I don't know where Armour Road. I mean, that's where you was, we was living you when know, you was I don't home. know where Armour Road's yeah, at. You do. You yeah, know, you do. You know where Blue Cross and Blue Shield is? No, no sir. You know where Warm Springs Road? I know where Warm Springs Road. Where Blue Cross and Blue Shield is on Warm Springs Road. Okay. After it crosses, uh, what is it? Name of that road that the doctor's office is on now. Oh, the yeah, it's after a man's name anyway. Um, uh, Woodruff. You know, Woodruff Road. You know where Woodruff Road is? Mm -hmm. Well, there's two blocks up the hill on the left is uh, Blue Cross and Blue Shield. And just beyond Blue Cross and Blue Shield is a traffic light. One Spring Road runs straight, Armour Road goes to the left. Mm -hmm. That's Armour Road that goes from there to uh, Airport Freeway. And what was what were you doing when I was born, Daddy? What? I was working for Wells Dairy. Really? Oh. I got Lee a job there. I, I run the ice cream department, and I got Lee a job in the wholesale route. So you wasn't driving a truck, you was actually working in the di uh, the factory part. Yeah. No, I didn't drive a truck. I, I, I managed the ice cream part. And um, what did you do after that? What did I do? Did I go work for Wyndham Electric Company? I think, honey, I can't remember. I think, I think I went to work for Wyndham Electric Company. Are you about to run out of film? I think it's out. Uh-oh. <laughs> Let me see. I, the, it still says it's recording. I don't know. Hold on just a second. Let's see. Okay. We're recording again. The tape what now? You were working for who, Daddy? Gordon Wyndham and uh, Wyndham Electric Company. I learned to to be a electrician. Uh, we rewired a lot of the buildings out on Fort Benning. I told you had a contract to rewire. It was two uh, uh, one ten going into them, and we pulled two twenty to all of them. So that's when the Lord called me. That's when I was working out there and uh, I couldn't go to sleep. I, I couldn't sleep. I'd get up and work all day, come home. Mom would be asleep in right to the side of me and I just could not go to sleep. My sleep was taken from me. 
until I got to the end of my rope and I told the Lord whatever he wanted me to do to jump off the end of the world, I would. Mm -hmm. And then I went to sleep and I surrendered to the ministry and I was called a preacher boy at Central Baptist Church for a good while. And all, uh, I was finally sent to Lottie Layfield's home. And I, sent, I was sent over there to lead singing. And somebody asked me to lead in prayer. And after that, they came to me and asked me, would I come back that night and preach? And I said, well, you know I've never preached before. And they said, that's all right. You just come on back. And I went back that night. And from that day on, nobody preached at that church or that little. It was at Lottie Lafayette's house. It was a little mission. And I, I became the pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church grew out from there. Made 25 dollars a week. And you're a full-time pastor. Yeah. Retired at this time. Mm -hmm. But we'll always preach. Mm -hmm. Try to lead people to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, um, b before, before the tape runs out here and everything, um, I know that I've asked y'all a whole bunch of questions and everything. This has been fun. Wished I had another take so that we could just keep right on talking because I've learned an awful lot today. But um, before we go, Daddy, I'd like for you to pray for our family as a whole um, and however the Lord leads you to pray. But if you'd just pray for our family. Okay. Most holy and precious Heavenly Father, as I come before thy throne of grace, Lord, I see myself as totally unworthy to even call upon your name. But Father, you know my heart and my thoughts are far off. And you know, Heavenly Father, that I love you. And I love you because you have blessed me and my family. You have granted me the sanity and the presence of mine and the presence of thy Holy Spirit that you have blessed my children, my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren. And I pray and thank you, Lord, for blessing my family. I'm not worthy. Lord, you know my heart. But thou art God and you know all things. And all you have to do, Lord, is speak the word, and it comes into being. And I thank you that you granted that my children and grandchildren have been uh, people that accepted you as their Savior. And you have blessed us, and you blessed me especially, to have the descendants that I have. And I ask you, Father, for your continued blessings on them. And as long as it's your will that I live in this body, grant me the presence of mind to present this body to you, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, because it is presented to you in the precious name of Jesus. In his name we pray, and for his sake we ask it. Amen. Yes. Um, thank you for that. And... Uh, I know that it's through your walk with the Lord that our generations that have gone on before you are walking with the Lord. And we know that it's through your faithful, righteous prayers that availeth much in my life, my children's life, and their children's lives. And um, I just want to thank you for loving the Lord enough to leave me or to teach me about him when I was growing up. And um, I just want to say thank you, Daddy and Mother, for that. And I love you, and I thank you for your prayers, your faithful prayers over my life, because I know it was those prayers that kept me out of a lot of danger and harm when I was growing up, and even today. 
I know it's through your faithful prayers that God has answered to shield us from all harm, danger, and evil. And I thank you for that, and I, I love you dearly. And I thank you for praying those same prayers over my children and my grandchildren, Keegan and Mackenzie and Ricky. I, I know that little Ricky's was touched by the Master's hand because Amen. of your prayers. Amen. And I know that Keegan's going to be touched Amen. by the Master's hands through those Amen. prayers. And I know that it was through those prayers that little Mackenzie has already mm -hmm. give her heart, life, and soul to my, the Lord. My father. So I just want to say I love you both, and I thank you for being such good parents, enough that you love me enough to lead me to the Lord. Well, I want you to know that we love your husband, we love Ricky. Mm. We have no in-laws in this family, and you know that, that he's like a son to us. And I love him dearly, because I know it was through the leadership of the Lord that you married him. Sure. And that the Lord has led him uh, to have the families that you do have. And I, I thank God for that. I do too. And he is definitely a God-sent man. He is. And I love him. Um, well, I thank y'all for this interview. We've enjoyed it, man, darling. And brought some old times back. Yeah. Um, is there any one thing that you'd like to say that maybe you would like? Um, up, oh, tape's in. It's gone. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Thank you, Lord. Everything was recorded that the Lord wanted recorded. Okay. And then he said to you, like he said to Moses, Why spend ye here?